Well, Ulysses, the Rays have promoted a familiar voice to the big radio crew. Yes, yes, they have. And now there's just one question left. So let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure you check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. So as we mentioned in the open there, uh, if you haven't heard, the Rays have promoted Neil Solons to radio play-by-play broadcaster status joining Andy uh, Andy Freed. Um, of course, we've uh, made our jokes about Neil Solons, but I'll be the first to say here, congratulations to him. He's worked very hard and long uh, for the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, he's been the pregame and postgame host for the past 10 years and filled in on occasion when Dave or, and, or, uh, yeah, Dave or Andy uh, were out. Or I think there were times where they would have even a, a three-man booth, but of course, Solon's uh, is replacing uh, the legend that is Dave Wills, who died on his, uh, unexpectedly uh, earlier this month at the age of 58. Now, I should also note that before Neil Solon started working for the Rays, he was the voice of the AAA Durham Bulls. So a couple questions here. Um, Ulysses, do you think Neil Solon's is going to be the long-term uh, sideman to Andy Freed, or is this kind of a one-year tryout and then the Rays may make a national search for that spot? That's a good question. I I don't think so. I think Neil is, okay. is the next guy for, for, for the long haul. Uh, I mean, this guy cares for the for the franchise, for the players, and obviously for for the community. I mean, Neil has done a lot to to help out around the community with um, with a lot of uh, charity work. And yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy. He he he's gonna stay in Tampa. He he has family. So I I, I think it's it was an easy decision for the Rays. Um, it I think this is obviously well deserved to for, for right. Neil to to get this. It just kind of might suck to get it this way you know what i'm saying like i don't i yeah. don't mean, i don't mean to poo poo it but like I mean, you've worked so hard like you 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 deserve it just because of your own merit and then this tragedy happens and then you're given your, your the dream job that you've always like you know that 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 kind of sucks um you know to to get it that way but you know he's 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 earned it and not yeah. to put words on anybody uh on anybody's mouth especially uh, people that are that are resting forever, but I think Dave would have really been proud of 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 that Neil finally got uh, his job. I mean, th- these guys worked together for more than a decade together. Yeah, and again, it's very very big shoes to fill because it's going to be really really different and awkward to tune into the radio broadcast and hear Neil and Andy as opposed to Dave and Andy. I think that's going to be a tough sell initially eventually people move on they get used to it and it's you know i mean we're not talking about you know uh, an athlete that replaces a legend on the field or a coach who replaces another coach i mean we're talking about radio broadcasters at the end of the day but it can never be easy to replace somebody who was so entrenched and met meant so much to the organization as dave will so i would think that adds a little bit of pressure to Neil going forward. Again, I don't know how much the Rays care or focus on radio uh, radio ratings and numbers and so forth, but there is a certain performance entertainment quality factor that Dave provided and built that I don't know if, let me put it this way, Neil will never be Dave. And I think that's one of the biggest things that Neil has to uh, and probably does keep in mind, he has to be Neil Solons. Like he just, he can't, he can't, you yeah. can't replace Dave. So just be Neil Solons. And I think 
uh, you know, Neil does have his own way of cheeky humor. I mean, we, we've we've seen it. Uh, you know, uh, I think at times it, I I I I don't I'm not particularly a fan when he does it to to fans who are who are calling uh, his show. But oh yeah, he's been can- condescending before to uh, the fan base out there. Yeah, not gonna lie. And we've talked about it. Like I mean, when when people call in and and he's just kind of like you know on the edge, just being very um, franchise friendly and I get it. He gets paid by them. Like why, why wouldn't he be? Um, but I think that's, that's the main point. He just has to keep being himself and, and not try to be Dave. Uh, I think they all, th- him and Andy already have chemistry, obviously. Right. That's why when you say it's big uh, shoes to fill and how it's going to be awkward, it's going to be less awkward because race fans already have Neil's voice in their head. You know, they're used to that. So it's going to be also familiar. Yeah, it it's going to be odd that there isn't ever a Dave interaction, but it's not like the 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 voice of Neil is is foreign to to right. right. I'm like they they know that they recognize that he's also in their homes, maybe not as much, but they but but it's been there. So I think that's why it's just a, a slam dunk uh, decision to have Neil be, be the guy. We've got more on this, but first uh, we have to. T- tell you about something very important and that is this uh these days every new potential hire can be high stakes wager for your small business you want to be a hundred percent certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the quali- uh, qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB, L O C K E D O N M L B to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply to that. Uh, you brought up an interesting point um, about, uh, well, first off, I, again, I've, We've made our jokes about Neil Solons. I've I've impersonated Neil Solons, but again, I just want to say congratulations to him. And he has brought, I think, for the most part, nothing but professionalism and class to the pregame and postgame show that he did for so long. I mean, replacing a guy like Rich Herrera, who you know was known for um, getting drunk at bars while doing the the show and missing ad breaks. I mean, come on. Um, and then oh, you we mentioned can say that uh, now? we can say we have we had always kind of just like danced around the waters, but we can say that now. Yeah. OK, cool. Yeah. So, OK, nice. heck, if you were a real rabid listener to Dave and Andy, I believe it was Dave who would make pokes and prods yes. to that element. Yeah, I actually. Yeah. Again, that's what you know, Dave is so unique. Like he he did. He used to go there. You know, I, I said it on 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 our remembrance uh, episode like he he used to push the envelope. And that's that's why, you know, Dave was so cool. So, so you're on record saying that Neil Solans will be the co play by play voice in 2024 as well and beyond. Yes. And I really do hope, Kevin, I am begging, begging here as a race fan. Um, I don't know, you know, if they're ever going to listen to this, but I am really, really begging that they keep sharing the play by play. I think that is one yeah. of the coolest things that, that, that race radio does, you know, a couple innings, you a couple innings, me like, and, and it keeps it fresh. And so I really, really do yeah. hope that that kind of interaction is going to, you know, be still a part of the broadcast. And I think they absolutely will. It'd be different if the Rays had replaced Dave with a former major league, or if it was Matt Joyce in the booth or Denard spin in the booth or arrest is distraught in the booth, sure. then you absolutely would not see that. But because you have a guy like Neil who has a lot of play-by-play experience and he's done inning here and inning there over the years as well. I think that's what it, uh, that's what's going to happen. Now, maybe Andy takes the bulk of the play-by-play, but I do think that was a nice, Again, I, I think the Rays have, you know, one of the top two or three radio broadcast crews in all of baseball. And that's oh, yes. something that um, you really want to keep going forward. Now, the question I have, actually two questions. Um, I always wondered what Neil Solon's made as the pre and post game host. And I wonder if he's he has to get a raise out of this. Like you're you're being promoted to the big chair. Yeah. So I would think that, you know, he's making a good, you know, twenty five, thirty, forty thousand dollars more than he was previously. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, this is a big promotion. I mean, there yeah. there are only what uh sixty ish jobs out At there. At least six figures, right? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Six figures. Yeah. If you're yeah. not, yeah, I would be very surprised that a play-by-play uh, guy in radio in MLB. Yes. Doesn't make six figures. I would be very surprised. Yeah. Even though it is the raise, we know, Hey, money matters, but at this point you got to pay for good quality. And again, Neil Solon's, I mean, if I had to guess, if I just had to ballpark it as far as what he was doing with pregame and postgame, and then he also had other responsibilities as well, doing the, the raise podcast and special events and community yeah. engagement outings. And, um, he also did some blogging and writing on the side. I mean, it's it's mm-hmm. a lot more. I don't know if people realize or understand it, but it's a lot more than Neil just coming on a half an hour before the game and an hour after the game right. to talk Rays baseball. There's a lot more uh, involved and inscribed with that uh, job position. So I'll just throw out that. Um, but I, w- I would say he, he had to be making like sixty to 80000 something along those lines for that Sounds role, if I had to guess. Yeah. But um, I guess going forward, because there's no way I would think that Neil Solons can do this job alongside Andy Freed while still taking on those responsibilities that he previously had. So the Rays need to look for a new pregame and postgame host. Oh, and they're probably not going to hire us. So <laughs> I'm wondering who that's going to be. Well, I mean, maybe we maybe we we missed out on the application um, window. Oh, I've got. Hey, I've I've actually I went to their website, believe it or not. Ooh. And who knows? Maybe they haven't listed it yet, or maybe they list it privately. I don't know. But uh, the In-house. positions I see on the Rays website are applied biomechanics analyst, hmm. van driver, tech team, intern for stadium operations, electrician, call center customer service rep. English teacher based in Montgomery and Durham. That'd actually be a good position for you. Oh, that'd be cool. Um, baseball technology operator, research and development intern, and baseball research and development analyst opportunity. So unless I'm missing something, I don't think any of those jobs or responsibilities have to do with uh, doing pre and post game radio broadcast. That just tells me that they already know they're going to hire Pre yeah. and post that there it's just like a oh gosh it's what's the um, what's the word here it's not um what is the word like when yes search like it's it's you're hiring internally yeah like in house like they already know yeah. somebody from six twenty that yeah that 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 was my first thought is they'd probably just promote Jay Retro or somebody like that yeah. to take on the role although I would think if you really want to do a bang up job of it. I mean, they could do what they've done historically of, Hey, just like you promote players from double A and triple A to the big leagues, you promote the triple A Durham broadcaster, Patrick Kynes, Kynes, whatever his name is. He's had a lot of experience over the years. Ooh, I like that. Uh, maybe that's a, a natural fit for the role or you can, can kind of, um, I mean, there's other guys in this community that can do it. I mean, you have JP Peterson, you have Steve Carney, Matt Salmon, um, so there's options out there, I would think. Anyway, I I really do like the the promoting of the of the AAA. Um, you know, Patrick, however yeah. you spell or pronounce his last name, Patrick K. Um, yeah, PK. Yeah, PK. I, I like PK because you would be doing what you did with Neil. You know, play by play for Durham. Okay, now you get the call to the big leagues, but you're the pre and post guy. And also, like I know, I. I don't know the, the people at 620 personally. Um, I know some of them. Yeah. And, 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 and so, you, so you might, so please check me if I'm wrong on this, but from when I've heard 620, like the talk show hosts and all that, I really do get the vibe that most, if not all of those guys are not baseball first. They're usually football first, hockey first, something else college football yeah you're right you're right on the mark there no you you hit the nail on the head so i i can't as a fan i don't want to know more than the pre and post guy i want the pre and post guy to make me a smarter fan yeah just like we try to make locked on race listeners smarter fans by giving you little insights and 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 stats that you might have not looked at before so yeah i i can't i i am not subscribing to having a guy just because he works already in the radio station but he's a football guy. He's a basketball guy. He's a hockey guy first. And then he, you know, he might say, Oh, well, you know, they didn't score a point there. It's like, it's runs. It's not right. It's, it's runs. It's not points. You know, 
Like I, I can't have that. Yeah. I, I think the one guy that is baseball first would be Jay Redcher. Um, I never really got along with him when I worked there, but that's neither beside the point, but you know, he might be a, a natural fit there, but we'll see. I'll, I'll be curious. I like the idea though, of just promote because a guy like PK Patrick kindness, however you say his last name, like he's embedded and followed so many of these players. And I mean, his job was baseball for, for so long. And I think he brings a level of professionalism in class with a position like that, that, Again, at the end of the day, when you're talking about sports radio, there's a lot of, you know, fart noises and and talking about beautiful women. Like it, it's a lot of guy yeah. talk too. Yeah. So and and the Rays probably aren't gonna be on board with that. Exactly. I clean it up. Exactly. So yeah, yeah I, I would I would so if I had a vote, which I do not, hey, PK would be the guy. And He's a baseball guy first, which I really need it to be. And the, yes. who are the Rays? The Rays are, uh, are a franchise that is not going to be looking out for free agents and veterans and all the time. You know, they're going to be promoting within. Um, so yes. this would line up with what they're doing inside the, the baseball field. And also, who better to talk about Jonathan Aranda than PK? Who better to talk about Vidal Brujan and Josh Lowe than PK? Yeah, this is the guy and, and the Rays of oh, Curtis Mead, you know, uh, and, and Kyle Manzardo when he comes up like uh, it, it, this is the guy that could potentially, you know, be that um, that liaison between AAA right. and MLB that a Rays fan really needs to because not a lot of people are into prospect talk and, and they might just right. hear the name, but they don't really know the guy. PK could be that liaison. And you have a guy that has worked with those guys or is so familiar with them that you can uncover a lot of interesting tidbits and nuggets and notes about these players. And you've probably already built a rapport with them. So when you're yes. doing this week in Rays baseball and you're doing some of these future uh, feature interviews and exclusives, it just makes it that much easier. Now, if you're uh, a locked on Rays listener out there and you want to uh, suggest myself and Ulysses for the pregame and postgame duties, Call the Rays, email them, tweet them, DM them, you know, do, do what you can to, to help us land the job, assuming that they can meet our uh, asking price. Um, I, I would just need to be paid as much or more than my full-time job in this gig too. So uh, <laughs> keep that in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, one thing I, I do know that, you know, whoever takes on this role for the Rays is that I think a, a really smart idea for this organization would be to have the pregame and postgame show, and quite frankly, the broadcast, uh, the in-game broadcast, uh, sponsored by Built Bar. You know, that might be an idea. I think that would be a fantastic idea. And you know what? You're a basketball guy. You're a March Madness guy. So you are going to love this, Kevin, because now Built Bar has a Built Bar March Madness bracket. Okay, so if you have a favorite bar or a puff, this is your time to make it count. You know I'll be voting for Brownie Batter Bar. That is my favorite built bar. And if you want the race to win, then you'll be voting for that bar as well. You got to support your team. You got to support your built bar or your built puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you will be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky locked on listeners will get a free box of built not only that, but a one locked on fan will also win a 12 month subscription to Built Bars to have Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. So you got to try Built Bar. Built is the best protein bar ever. They're amazing and they're made with 100% real chocolate. I've told you this a thousand times and I will tell you to you a thousand more. So today go to uh, builtmarchmadness.com. You can vote for your favorite bar or puff, and you can pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March, so hop in and support your pick today. So, Ulysses, now that Venezuela is out of the World Baseball Classic, does that mean you will be watching and honing in on more Rays spring training? Or you're, if it came down to a regular Rays spring training game and the semifinals and the finals of the World Baseball Classic, what are you watching? WBC baby all okay. day every day yeah That's fair. spring training it's come on come on guys yeah. and but there way, are some, there are some interesting nuggets that are coming out of spring training st- i.e. Ryan Ta- yeah nuggets are fine i enjoy the nuggets i yum okay. yum 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 i love ray <laughs> spring training nuggets i'll eat them every day all yeah. day but the stats the games themselves really do not give me anything really 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't focus on the stats. Again, I know that we caught some heat for joking about and making fun of Tristan Gray. Look, he's having a killer spring training. I don't deny that, but, and I don't deny that maybe he's made some mechanical tweaks and fixes to his stance and his swing. I get all that, but I, I want to see it in AAA. I want to see it over the course of two, three, four months in AAA before I become a believer and, and buy into that. And Kevin, this doesn't have to be like a player specific thing, but if a player, let's say a player is having a really awesome spring training, who is he doing it against? Yeah. Also, are those pitchers really all stretched out? Are they honestly just working on something? Are they Tyler Glass now working on their slutter and they don't yeah. know where it's going and they don't care about the results? They just want to hone it in? Are the, Is that the kind of picture that 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 some players are, are are facing and that's why they're yeah. having good results like i mean i don't i i don't think it's too far off base saying that just because you're having a nice spring training that that oh he's he's unlocked it no show me in yeah. real baseball games don't show me in spring training because that doesn't mean anything and when the games count and when the games matter and there's some actual pressure on you look i am kind of the example of I'll clean it up in a pickup basketball game, but when there's an actual game that counts and means something and the speed gets a little bit faster, it's like, Oh man, maybe I'm not as good as I think I am. And I think that happens with a lot of players in spring training and then being able to translate it to the regular season, triple a double a the majors, same thing, regular season, baseball versus playoff baseball. Some guys, you know, can't handle that. So, um, look, well, Kevin, I, you're gonna cut. You're gonna catch some some heat there because some people don't like the word clutch. It's like a dirty <laughs> yeah. word. Oh, have you watched any sports ever? The clutch exists. Clutch oh yeah. Exists. Just because you can't necessarily measure it correctly, there are some guys that, again, the the anxiety, like it, basically saying that clutch exists or doesn't exist. You you might as well be saying that anxiety doesn't exist. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you're going against mental health people. Yeah. And okay? nervousness doesn't exist. Like, come be on. Better. Be better. Yeah. Let's be, be better. Honest. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you mentioned this. Yeah. Where, you know, it might be Tyler Glass now mentioning or, or trying to fine tune the slutter and just work out some various kinks here and there. A uh, little interesting uh, chicken nugget from spring training. Ryan Thompson, you know, maybe trying to push the limits of the new pitch clock rules. Uh, he recently, uh, last week, tried to quick pitch former uh, Rays catcher Travis Darno delivering the ball as soon as he got set in the box at the required eight second mark. Uh, reading from Topkin's article here, uh, Thompson's strategy was to look at the clock and to be set and throw, quote, right when the nine seconds went away and the eight didn't come up yet, given that Darno was considered engaged since he had both feet in the box and was looking around uh kevin cash later said that what thompson was trying to do was kind of borderline and then that that would get called uh during a, a regular season game but i gotta be frank i don't hate ryan thompson for trying to work something out figure out what he can and can't get away with i mean that's kind of sort of what we're trying to do with with the shifts and some of these other rules changes try to bend as much as you can before you get called for it Yes, this is exactly what every player should be doing right now. It's just trying to exploit the rules as much as you can in games that do not matter so that when, so that you know where the line is. And so once yeah. you know where the line is, then you can do that in, in games that matter. I think this is tremendous, um, uh, a, a tremendous idea of, for, for Thompson. I hope every race pitcher is trying to do that as well. And that's why ultimately spring training stats do not matter. If he, if, yeah. if if Travis Darno gets gets called uh, on strikes and, and with, with this thing, and and this might not go very well in 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 actual games, and you're looking at Travis Darno like, oh man, this guy's really struggling in, in spring training. Yeah. Or if it was just a normal young guy, oh, he's really not having a lot of success in spring training. No, it's because a guy like Ryan Thompson's trying to you know finagle with the rules. That's why I just I don't understand people that get so caught up in spring training stats like. Come, I just touch grass. Yeah, no, it's it's fair. So yeah, so I'll be curious to see what other items and different maneuvers that players and teams will work out and see what they can and can't do. And then you practice some of those things you are allowed to do to see if you can gain some sort of 
advantage. Um, you know, I don't know how or if it would be as impactful as, you know, the the shift and using four outfielders. And, um, you know, the Rays have done so many different things over the years. I think they've got to have something up their sleeve. Actually, I remember that um, something that uh, pitchers used in the minors was to, when the, the pitch clock was in place, was to get set immediately in the 15 second window or 20 if a runner is on to deliver the pitch, forcing the hitter to wait anxiously as that hitter is now limited to only one timeout per at bat. So anything to make the opposition uncomfortable or think too much, I would think that it would help. Just like with Ryan Thompson, you're, you're a side armor. That helps you. Different pitchers using different grips and, you know, occasionally a quick pit. You know, whatever you can, the, the gamesmanship aspect of it, it, it all ties in at some point. It's legal. I mean, it, 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 you're you're just going within the 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 laws of of the game. Now, I I think if I were a pitcher, the the thing that I would try to to do is to hold the ball as much as I can the first couple of pitches. Yeah. Why? So that so that hopefully the batter takes its time out early in the at bat, mm-hmm. and now he's on the hook. Now he yeah. has to stay there holding that bat. So if you get him to use his timeout in the second, third pitch of the at bat, awesome. Now you can just make him wait, just be set at, at 10 seconds. And then you make him sweat for the next nine seconds. Like that. I think that that's what I would try to do. I'm, I'm, I would think that's what other pitchers would try to do. Just try to get them to use their timeout first. And then you, ha- you have them hanging, but I mean, obviously there are, there are going to be way more implications on, yeah. on, on doing that. Is your defense going to get flat footed if you do that too often? Uh, and so are, is that going to be a detriment to your shortstop and your second baseman or your outfielders are not going to be, you know, as much in the game? I don't know. It, it, it's, it's going to be a lot, yeah. but this is the, this is the race. Like they, they know how to finagle. They know how to be pioneers. And, and so, yeah, I agree with you. They probably have something, you know, under their sleeve. Question: If Ryan Thompson did get called for this quick pitch, would it just count as a ball? I think so. I think it okay. gets the ball. Yeah. All right, that's fair. Which, by the way, Ryan Thompson, if you have not checked out or follow him on social media, I mean, he is some really he's he's one of those guys that is out there and engaging, and you get sort yeah. of a inside look at his life and his viewpoints and his feelings and opinions, not just the whole arbitration mess. The you know the thousand word 28 tweet soliloquy but just even the the day-to-day of you know how he gets recognized on the street people think he's zach efflin um (laughs) how you know the vast majority of ball players that come to the rays love the clubhouse and enjoy being there like just little little tidbits here and there um well it's awesome yeah, I, I I totally agree with you. And you know, Ryan, the doors are open. You can come yeah. on the show anytime if you want to connect with some more race fans. You can always do that, Ryan. Yeah, if you're a listener out there and you'd like to hear Ryan Thompson on the show, just uh, advocate for us, be our champions, and yes, say, hey, Ryan, you need to be on the Locked On Race podcast and play um, and play baseball trivia and play name that war with these guys and see if you can stump them. We could as well. All right. Uh, thank you for making us your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you on Wednesday.